Before I begin, I just want to say that what we're trying to learn are generalities. We're going to learn the rules and not the exceptions. As you go through uh, the video, uh, there will absolutely be different times when you're going to say, hey, what about this disease? How about that disease? Sure. Uh, there are always exceptions and you know, uh, th th that's what you learn during your uh, residency and beyond. But where you guys are starting out, you want to learn the general rules. And then you can build on and learn the exceptions. Welcome back, nearing the end of the NeuroAxis video series. So the last two would be subcortex and cortex. And we'll do these together uh, and try to uh, uh, make it easy for you. So first off, subcortex is the white matter fibers extending from the edge of the brain down deep into the brain down into the brain stem. So I'm encompassing all those structures for simplicity, okay? So if you say, what about the diencephalon? What about the internal capsule? Yep, they're all together. For this, for the purpose of this video, the basics, to learn the basics, we're putting them all together. So first off, what is the cortex? This, this may sound like a really simple question, but I want you all to think about this. What is the cortex? And the way I look, like to look at it is, the cortex is what makes us human. So first of all, the cortex is, is the, uh, the gray matter. The cortex is not the myelinated white matter tracts, but the gray matter, that's where all the cell bodies are. And the gray matter, or our cell bodies, is what makes us human. What the heck does that mean? How do these cell bodies in the brain make us human? Well, you know, the unique thing about being human is that, one, we think, we have language abilities, we have reasoning ability, we have judgment, we have executive function, we have this crazy memory, okay? So all of these higher cortical function would be occurring in the cortex. And then the subcortex is like the highway system. It takes what you've thought about and all the cortical stuff and it takes it from point A to point B, okay? And for simplicity's sake, you can think of it as there's no real processing that occurs in the highway system, in the subcortex. So here's a few examples of how you can differentiate this. If a patient has right-sided weakness, arm and leg weakness, no crossed findings, no uh, bowel and bladder issues. So you now think, okay, no bowel and bladder, that's not spinal cord. Uh, no crossed findings, so it's not um, brainstem. So now we're looking at subcortex or cortex. And both the subcortex and cortex can cause contralateral weakness and sensory loss. So the way you differentiate this is to look for, actively look for higher cortical dysfunction. So do they have a language problem? Do they have apraxia? Do they have cognitive issues? Do they have memory issues? Do they have executive function issues, judgment issues arising from this new event? Now, people can have judgment issues and memory issues uh, that, that are worsening over a long period of time. I'm talking about immediately after a given event. And if the answer is no, those are all intact, guess what? It's now a subcortical stroke. Simple. If those are involved, okay, it's a cortical stroke. Real simple. So, you know, I can say it's simple and I, I get it. You guys are probably thinking this makes no sense to me. So until you see a few of these patients and really pick at the history, okay, really, really try to differentiate is this cortical or subcortical. Um, this may be a little confusing, but once you do a few of these in real life, uh, this becomes really easy and really, really straightforward, okay? So we are now done with the neuro axis. So what I would really like you guys to do is watch all these videos beginning to end, and it's not that many, it's, it's only eight total videos, and really absorb the content of these videos before you start your rotation. I know I'm saying this at the end of the last video, I get it, but 
some of you guys have probably just watched this through and just kind of said, great, I got it, I move on. But no, please don't. Please really absorb these eight videos. It's not that long. It's not that many. And really learn it because when you go into clinic and you've mastered these eight videos, guess what? You are going to start neurology as an amazing, stellar student. And I'm not just blowing hot air. This is true. Every single student, once they get beyond this hurdle, neurology becomes so much more fun. If you never understand these concepts, the, the how to localize a lesion, the neuroaxis, well, neurology will never be easy. It'll never be fun. You're going to struggle the entire rotation. And if you struggle during the rotation, guess what? You're going to struggle during the test. And, and the neuro shelf is probably one of the hardest exams you will take in your clinical rotations. So anyway, um, learn the stuff, and uh, I'm going to post additional videos on uh, various neurologic topics and uh, kind of go through them with you guys step by step. Um, so good luck on your clinical rotations, and we'll see you on the next video.